We asked all these folks what biblical principles ought to frame and drive our thinking. I think two driving principles for church planning. One has to be love. And that love, of course, would be our love for the Lord, our gratitude to the Lord for what he's done for us, and our reflecting the love of God in our love for other people. And if we really do have true and sincere love, the love of Christ abiding in us, then we will do this work of church planning. I think another thing about church planning that ought to, in terms of a method or in terms of uh, how, what's our philosophy that would drive us to do the kind of church planning that you do, and I think of the work that I'm doing in particular <clears throat> is the goal of church planning as I was just told outside, we were talking about this, but the goal of church planting is the worship of God. I really love what Isaiah 49 says about the expanse of the kingdom of Christ. That the, It's there that the Father says to the suffering servant that it's too small a thing that that you would just save the Jews, but I will set you as a, as a light to the, to the nations. That, the, that my salvation would be preached to the ends of the earth. It's the commission of the Father to give the Son a people, and then the Son commissioning the church to go and to, to draw people into relationship with him. What drives it is the scriptures that drive it. You, know, you go to the Great Commission, go, therefore, make disciples of the nations. Uh, the Great Commission is a going uh, commission. Um, Jesus said, I'll build my church. The gates of hell will not prevail against it. And so. The gates of hell are in the defensive position. It's the church that's advancing. You know, we often read that verse and we think about hell coming against the church and we're trying to hold out hell. But mm-hmm. that's that's really not the image there. The church is going mm-hmm. forward. So um, the kingdom coming on earth is, is in heaven. It's all through the scriptures. So I think as the church has been committed to uh, implementing what the Bible says, it's just driven us naturally to wanting to be involved in church planning. We are a denomination that clings to Christ's kingship, to his authority. We cherish and love that. And uh, one of the prime outworkings of it is is this urgent burden to go and to make disciples. It's almost too simple to to state. It's just the Great Commission. It's just the constant uh, privilege and responsibility uh, to live and speak in such a way that As you follow Christ, others will follow you following Christ. And church planning is just doing that in new places as the Lord opens opportunities. And finally, we just asked if there was any message each would like to leave with the church as a whole. Spend more money, send more people, start more churches. Uh, Don't make it complicated. Ask people to sacrifice and see what happens. Uh, God will build his kingdom uh, through us or without us. So it's not a question of whether it will be built. It's a question of who will be there to be as laborers. Though the, the work of church planning and revitalization, really, in the church uh, is one of a sincere love that abides in us, that's something that the Holy Spirit has to work in. So it's not something that uh, I can create. We, I don't have the power to create it. It's something I have to continually call upon God to give. Your trust has to be in the Lord. So it's not easy and what you might think would happen in a year may take a decade. I would encourage people to view church planting as they would any other endeavor that requires great effort. Throughout this whole process, the thing that's kind of become solidified in my mind is that um, part of being a healthy church is being uh, a a multiplying church. Churches, daughtering churches, ought to be a normative part of healthy church life. We have as a standing uh, item every year when we get together as elders, even of a, of a new work, uh, church planting. What are we going to be doing? What communities are we going to be praying for? Um, what things can we be doing and preparing for? Because we we just have come to see that as an integral part of healthy church life. Part of what I would like to accomplish in um, bringing these interviews to DVD and sending them to each of your congregations is to show 
just how much work is going on and has been going on in our denomination. I want to encourage you with that. Um, again, our denomination is not a large denomination. The percentage, shall we say, of involvement is wonderful. It's full of grace. Uh, so many people have been themselves motivated by the Lord to be involved in this outreach work. And so I want to bring these interviews to you uh, to show that it's going on. But again, part of it as well is to get you personally involved. If you are not yet connected to church planting work in our denomination, either by thinking about it, praying about it, supporting it on a personal level, or supporting it with your finances, I really want to encourage you to turn your thoughts toward uh, these efforts. It is healthy for our denomination to have this activity going on constantly. Our thoughts turn toward it, our prayers turn toward it, our efforts turn toward it, and I hope you'll be blessed as you invest yourself in it. I sought the Lord and he Would you take even this occasion to consider supporting the work of our PCNA church planting with a gift? And every bit as importantly, sessions, deacon boards, would you reflect toward the end of this year on what your whole congregation might do in terms of a budget line item for regular giving? Thank you. Listen.